Inverse continuity. So for this we have um, a few things to set up. So we're going to say that if f of x, so if some function um, is continuous, is continuous on interval i, this is x interval i, of course, from it could be from a to b or something like that, with range, so range means um, the, the range of our y values, right? Uh, so the possible y values we could get from our x interval or our domain of i, um, if, um, and, sorry, and if f uh, inverse of x exists, so if the inverse does exist, then we have, so then um, f, the inverse of f is continuous, continuous with domain r, domain capital R. Okay, and so here's why. Uh, this might trigger something, like trigger some memories of inverses, right? So let's say we have um, some function, okay, and it looks like this or something like that, okay? So we have something like that, and then, um, so on x we have a to b. This is our interval i, okay? Uh, so this is domain, domain uh, of a to b, okay? And our range, let's say it goes from c to d or something like that. So um, range is from c to d. That's on the y-axis, so here's our y and there's our x, so c to d. All right, so our inverse, so this is for f of x, okay? And then for our f inverse of x, that would look something like, so here's our y equals x line, so that would look, it would just flip around, okay? So something like that, it will just reflect across the y equals x-axis. So when we get, this is actually c and d, okay, they'll switch. And we get a and b up here on our y-axis, and this is f uh, negative one. Okay, so here our domain, so domain, domain is from c to d, c to d, and um, now our range is from a to b, range a to b. Okay, so see how here our domain is actually what our range was. So range from here was c to d. So that's that's this was our r, and this was our i. Okay, and then here uh, it turns out that our domain is going to be r, which is c to d. Okay, and our range is going to be i, uh, which isn't noted here, but that's what it's going to be. Okay, so it kind of just flips. Uh, the x values become the y values, and the y values become the x values. All right, so that's how inverses work. Uh, and now we'll go over composite functions. Composite functions. Functions. Okay, so composite, um, just a refresher, that means that uh, a function is inside of another function. Okay, it contains another function or it's composed of another function. So here we have if g, if uh, function g is continuous, continuous at x equals c, and if f, that's another function, is continuous at um, x equals g of c, so that's some number. Uh, then we have that capital F of um, x, which is equal to f of g of x. So here we have our composition. g is contained or um, composed within f, uh, function f, is continuous at x equals c. Okay, uh, Meaning that if we have f capital F of C, that means that we have F of G of C. So the first thing, this was satisfied, G of C is definitely continuous because we know that G is continuous at X equals C, okay? And then we also have the F, the outside function here, this is continuous at X equals G of C, so that's what's inside, so that we're all good, okay? So that's how composite functions work. Um, and now for one last topic of substitution substitution. Okay, so for this, uh, what we're going to say is that continuity, um, yeah, okay, so continuity, the, the whole reason being for continuity is that um, if it's at a point, if we know that there's continuity at a point, so continuity at a point makes finding a limit, makes finding 
the limit easy. The limit um, to that point easy. Okay? So here's an example um, because, oh, I'll explain here. So because uh, limit x goes to c of f of x is equal to f of c. So if we know that a limit uh, or a function is continuous, we know that this equation, remember this was equation one from the very beginning of this video. Um, so we know that this equation holds true. So basically all we have to do is plug that c in for the x spot. Okay, so that's all we have to do. Like I said, um, so this is done by plugging in. So we're going to plug in our C value, plugging in uh, C value uh, into our F of X. So that's all we'd have to do. Once we confirm that a function is continuous uh, at a certain point or at a point, then we could just plug in that point into the function and solve. Okay. So that does it for the video. Um, again, I hope that helped, and good luck on your homework. Honey, you do me wrong, but still I'm crazy about you.